thanks Pastor Johnson and thanks to all of you for coming out here today. And we do come together in the great American tradition to stand in defense of liberty. The First Amendment guarantees our right to the free exercise of religion. This includes the freedom to believe and worship, but also the freedom to live our lives as Christians. This truth is self-evident, and this right is God-given, and it's the reason so many came to America in the first place. But now our basic liberties are under assault. First, it was Obamacare. The federal government came after businesses like Hobby Lobby, who stood for life. They came after church groups, like the Little Sisters of the Poor, who were minding their own business, caring for the weak and needy. And then they came after those who upheld traditional marriage. A baker and a photographer were driven out of business. Then in Houston, the mayor issued subpoenas to five pastors demanding their sermons. And it's not just the government. It's a culture of intolerance. Recently, the CEO of Mozilla lost his job. What was, he, what was he fired for? Mismanagement? Misuse of funds? No, it's simply because he supported an amendment to the California Constitution that upheld traditional marriage, an amendment that won. You should know I'm not here for myself. I have two boys and a girl. And I pray and I wonder, will they be able to grow up in this land as Christians without being marginalized, ostracized, and even criminalized? Will future job applications say simply, Christians need not apply? And it's not just Christians, it's people of traditional faith across a broad spectrum. Our parents and grandparents knew that marriage was the union of one man and one woman. It was elementary, and they weren't haters, and they weren't ignorant. They just wanted what was best for our children. They knew the blessings of family. And it wasn't that long ago that Hillary Clinton stood on the floor of the Senate and defended marriage as a good thing. And it wasn't that long ago that President Obama stood for traditional marriage and called it a God thing. Yes, Obama called it a God thing. Well, I don't think God has changed his mind, but our president has, and with a vengeance. We can no longer hide our heads in the sand. These problems aren't going away. But people are afraid to speak out. The political correctness that has infected our colleges is spreading through society. The self-proclaimed tolerant have become the epitome of intolerance, demanding lockstep in conformity. Bullies will be bullies, and bullies need to be confronted. The book of Genesis speaks about marriage as one man and one woman. So does our Lord Jesus Christ. And we can't be ashamed of the words of our Lord Jesus. For there is the story of salvation, his love for his bride, the church. Marriage is written into our humanity. Each one of us has a respiratory system, a cardiovascular system, a skeletal system, whole and intact. Only the reproductive system is different, for it functions only in the coming together of one man and one woman. This isn't religion. It's biology 101. It's how we're made. Men and women were made for each other. And for that, there's marriage. We talk a lot about rights, but there are no rights without the right to life. And we talk a lot about freedom, to do what we want, but not enough about our obligations. Every child has a right to be born, a right to life. And every child has a biological mom and dad and deserves to be cared for by them. The issues of marriage and children are intertwined by nature and by God. We believe in equality, but equality does not mean interchangeability. As men and women, we are equal, but we are not the same. We have different strengths, and we complement each other. Only a mom can be a mom, and only a dad can be a dad. And a child deserves both. And why should we be afraid to say this? Why should our people be marginalized for saying what President Obama and Hillary Clinton both said not so long ago? The other side talks a lot about pride. 
We're, we're proud. We're proud to defend the innocent and boy, and we don't want to pay for anybody's abortion. And we're proud of traditional marriage. Traditional marriage is good, good for men, making them useful and responsible. Traditional marriage is good for women, offering them protection and security, especially when they're vulnerable. And traditional marriage is good for children. In fact, the leading indicator of a child's success is an intact family, the father and mother. Traditional marriage, natural marriage, is the best social program ever known to humanity. And so I'll end with this. Society does not end with does not end or begin with government. A healthy society starts with a family, with a mom and dad, and then aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas. This is the first and best safety net. If you look at our troubled neighborhoods, it's not because there's not enough government, it's because there's not enough dads. Friends, I don't want anyone to be misled. This isn't a plea for cookie-cutter families. It's simply a call to recognize what's best for our children. It's a call to liberty and to life. For all the talk about having a right to marry, for all the talk about marriage equality, we still have to address the real question, what is marriage? If you would like to engage us in the debate, let's have it. Let's have at it. Let's really talk about it. And let's talk about it in liberty a liberty befitting a republic. God bless you all.